You saw me demonstrate in the previous lesson a 2-5-1, in which I just played the power chords, the roots and the fifths of each chord, and you didn't hear the full sonority, the full sound or quality of the major or minor tonality. Well, what I'm doing in this lesson, <coughs> excuse me, is examples 27 and 28 are some basic voicings that would exist in this area that will give you all three components of the chord. Now, we're just going to be playing three-note voicings. And the reason for this is if you just play big block voicings on the guitar, that's great if you want to sound like a guitar player. And that's great if you need a big sound. That's the way to play if you're having to drive things or it's just you on an acoustic guitar or you've got a guitar bass drum trio or all of the above. So it's an approach. It's not the only approach. What I'm gearing you up for is to see voicings that color the sounds. Now, there are many great guitarists that you could listen to that play things other than just block voicings. When I say block voicings, I mean, for example, this G minor. That's what we call a block voicing. How many strings, how many voices are in this? Six. But here's the issue. If you look back at diagram 27, how many roots do you have? You're supposed to know this. There are three, right? How many fifths? Two. And then what do you have? One flatted third. All you need for it to be a minor chord is one root, one flat third, and one fifth, right? So we're going to look at some voicings, and you can mix and match this any way you want. That's a great way for you to explore the ideal voicing for your song. And at first, I'll just tell you, at first you may not even hear these things, or they may sound weak or kind of strange, because if you're, if you're a guitar player and all you've ever done is played guitar and you haven't really listened to keyboards and you haven't really listened to things from an orchestration standpoint, you're used to listening to things through the ears of a guitarist. I mean, I was like that early on, but what happens is you get used to hearing this as the voicing for a G minor, or perhaps this, or perhaps this. You might know two or three voicings, and you never learn to hear all these more open voicings. Now, obviously, these voicings I'm going to show you aren't great from a power standpoint, because you're only playing three voices. You can't smack the guitar because you're going to have to deaden strings in between, and sometimes that's not even practical. But in terms of musical playing, where you have voice leading, these are going to serve you well. So enough talk. Let's go to example 27. You can see that for the G minor, what are we going to play? A root, a flat, a third, and a fifth. And then what are you going to do? You're going to practice every possible fingering. I'm not going to go through all of these right now. There are lots of fingerings. You could just bar, whatever works for you but it's up to you to find every possible fingering. Those are the little gems that exist. Then we need to go to the five chord. What's the five chord? The C. All right. Now, on face value, I have to say this from having taught for over four decades. Most people would take this example and say, okay, here's my G minor, and here's my C. Oh, and then there's my F. Okay. They wouldn't take it the next step and say, what is the voice leading? Meaning, we have three voices. We number them from the highest in pitch to the lowest. This is where you can get some great melodic ideas. You're probably wondering, can I get anything out of this course that'll help my soloing? Well, now we get some stuff that'll help you in your soloing. If I had to play over a 2-5-1, I might solo and use the line that I have written right there on the second string. Now, you don't hear the chords, but if I go... You might say, well, I could see that. That's just in scale. Big deal. Well, here's the issue. Most people see the scale, but they don't see the notes as coming out of a chord or indeed out of a particular chord voicing. Now, let's look at a jam track here. Just a Latin groove. So you've got a measure of the two chord. I'll, here we go. There's your G minor. I'm using 
those chord forms, right out of example 27, along with other chords you're going to see in a short period of time, and I'm playing melodically. I'm playing and I'm thinking about the chords. And here's the thing. You're not thinking in terms of rhythm guitar and lead guitar. You're thinking like a piano. You're seeing the arpeggios, you're seeing the chord forms, different chord forms, you're seeing the scale, you're seeing everything right here, but you're able to track the chords and keep your melodic lines moving and move into the new chord gracefully so you have nice melodies. So that was an application of some of those chord voicings, right? Example 28, we have another approach. So what do you hear? I hear a different melody up on top. Okay, so you could see that I was using these chord voicings. And if you're having a hard time seeing the chord voicing, picture the big block form and then compare it to the diagrams 27 through 29. Your block voicings, the G minor and the C and the F, are all coming right out of there. If you play other notes that aren't in the fingering, they're coming out of the arpeggio. Uh, I'll quickly demonstrate this. Let's say you're looking at G minor. So the G minor chord is right here, right? But then, that's how you normally play it, but you also have this flatted third out here. So you might say, okay. You hear the G minor sound? So I'm just holding this B flat. Okay, then I go to the C chord. Any combination of those notes. And so the more ways you practice the arpeggio in terms of holding a note and thinking of it as an upper voice or perhaps a lower voice, watch this. So there I used the G as a common tone for the G minor and the C, and then I just saw everything above it, right? If you didn't follow what I just did, I'll do it one more time. G minor. So here's the G. I'm going to use this as a melody tone or as a constant tone for my voicing, as a starting point. I see the arpeggio above that. Is that the arpeggio? No, that's the scale. I need to see this. See how it's, it's right out of the G minor. For the C, now if that fingering scares you or you don't understand what it is, what should you be looking at? My fingers or the notes on the guitar? Here's my C chord the A form, normally we finger like that, but the arpeggio goes... So we have different fingerings you could play. And then for the F chord, see what I might do? I might, there's the F chord with the C, might move it to the A. It's all coming right out of those arpeggios. All right, now there are a lot of voicings, and obviously we're restricted to this one area. As you move up the neck, you're going to get more of these different voicings other than block voicings for chords. But I suggest you take diagrams 27 and 28, learn these voicings, and what's good for them is that they force you to play finger style or hybrid picking style, and get you away from just wanting to smack all of the strings, and try to listen to them in terms of like maybe a horn trio or a, a string trio where you have voices, lines, and explore exactly what happens with each of these moves. What I just played was example 28. Here's the soprano line. Sorry, it goes like... I don't have my glasses on. Okay, so we're going G minor, then you go into the C, then you go into the F. So there's that line. If you play it against the track, you two, three, four. So I'm getting a melody that comes right out of the chords. If I look at the voicings... And then do that with each one of those lines. Okay, I've probably said this before, so go ahead and do it. See you next time.